Welcome to Math Studio Talk. The purpose of these videos is to help you interpret what students should be able to do and understand to meet the demands of Common Core Math. We will demonstrate various games, activities, and models that can be used within the structure of a formal lesson plan to develop flexible thinking and deep understanding. And of course, we'll show you the math. Hi, I'm Nick Timpone, and in this video I will be dealing with the number and operations for fractions domain for fourth grade, which builds from the work done in the NF domain in third grade. As you can see, students will extend their understanding of fraction equivalents, use unit fractions to build fractions with numerators other than one, and begin work with decimal notation. All of the standards in this domain are important. In the time we have, we will only be able to examine the content of some of them. Let's begin with 4NF1. In this standard, students move from the work they did with visual models and equivalent fractions in third grade to understanding that multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number will create equivalent fractions. We will move students through a concrete, pictorial, abstract progression to help them discover this relationship. Have students color in fraction circles, 2 thirds, 4 sixths, and 6 ninths. Coloring in the fractional part of the circle will give the students a sense of the size of one fraction compared to the other by the time it takes to color it in. That's what makes it a concrete experience. After they finish coloring them in, have them turn and talk to their neighbor about what fraction each circle represents and what they notice about the size of each fraction. From this discussion, students should see that all of the fractions are the same size even though the number and size of the parts is different. Next, show the students another visual model. This one they're not creating. You're just showing it to them. 3 quarters, 6 eighths, and 9 twelfths using bar models this time, also known as tape diagrams. Ask students to compare the sizes of the fractions and think about how it relates to the activity with the fraction circles. 3 quarters. 6 8 9 twelfths. Ask students if they see any relationship between the numerators and the denominators of the different fractions. 3 quarters equals 6 eighths equals 9 twelfths. We'll draw arrows to show the multiples if the students don't bring them up. 3 times 2. 3 times 3, 4 times 2, 4 times 3. And the final step is working with fractions without any models. Give students problems like these. Have them write them in their graph paper notebook and try to solve them. They should be able to see that 5 times 2 is 10, so I need to multiply 4 times 2 to get 8 tenths. After they've done them in their notebook, have them share their solutions with each other, have them share them with the class, and make sure everyone's solid with the procedure for finding equivalent fractions. This concrete pictorial abstract approach developed over a number of days and reinforced with fluency practice will help students deeply understand fraction equivalency. This is a critical foundational understanding that must be in place before moving to more work with fractions. Now on to standard four and F2. Now that students understand fraction equivalency, they can use that knowledge to compare two fractions. Comparing fractions can be done two ways, either by comparing them to each other when their denominators are the same, or comparing each to benchmark fractions they are familiar with, such as 1 half. In previous grades, students learned to compare fractions with the same numerator or same denominator. They also learned that 1 third is greater than 1 sixth, because the larger the denominator, the smaller each part of the fraction is. And conversely, they learn that 2 fifths is less than 4 fifths, because 2 fifths is 2 1 fifths, and 4 fifths is 4 1 fifths, and 2 is less than 4. For most students, comparing fractions with the same denominator is the easier concept to understand. Now let's look at comparing fractions with different numerators and denominators. 
I'm going to draw a bar model. I'm going to draw two bar models. And this one is going to be thirds. And I'm going to draw a second bar model using the same hole. Okay? But now we're going to make this fourths. And then I'm going to indicate the fraction by shading. With bar models, to indicate the fraction, you use shading, and it helps to use a different color. So now this represents two thirds. And this represents three fourths. And let's write those fractions down two thirds and three fourths. Now we want to compare them. Sometimes with the bar model, it's obvious which fraction is larger or smaller than the other. With this particular case, they're pretty close, so you can't be accurately uh, comparing them by using just the picture. A procedure that works really well when working with bar models is called splitting the unit fraction. Each one of these is a unit fraction. One third, one third, one third, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. We want these two fractions to have the same denominator. So what you can do is split. We're going to split the thirds into fourths. Don't worry if it's not perfectly accurate. They're hard to get exact. Okay? Now we're going to split the unit fraction of one fourth into thirds. We didn't change the size of the fraction. You notice the red stayed the same. But now each bar is divided into unit fractions of one twelfth. Now you can compare by counting the twelfths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two thirds equals eight twelfths. Count the quarters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three quarters equals nine twelfths. Now the comparison is easy because I have common denominators. Eight twelfths is less than. 9 twelfths. Now let's move on to standard 4, NF3. This standard is very much about decomposing, taking apart, and composing, putting together fractions and mixed numbers in order to perform addition and subtraction operations with them. This work with fractions and mixed numbers is an extension of their previous work with composing and decomposing whole numbers and using number bonds. Let's examine this with mixed numbers and bar models. This is a bar model that represents the mixed number 2 and 2 fifths. 1, 2, and 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2 fifths. 2 and 2 fifths. Converting this mixed number is difficult with the way the model is constructed right now. So what we need to do is decompose the holes into fractions of the same denominator, which is fifths. And now to convert this mixed number, a student can count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 2 and 2 fifths is equivalent to 12 fifths. But I want to take this a little further to make a point. Let's decompose these even further so students understand how to make this conversion. This one whole is equivalent to 5 fifths. This one whole is equivalent to 5 fifths. And this fraction is 2 fifths. Adding these fractions together, 5 fifths plus 5 fifths plus 2 fifths equals 12 fifths. By learning to move in this way, students develop a deep understanding of the structure of fractions and mixed numbers, and how the same quantity can be represented different ways, further reinforcing the concept of equivalence. It is important for the students to see how their work in third grade that dealt with the concept of expressing whole numbers as fractions 
ties directly to their understanding of mixed numbers. Fourth grade is the first time that students address mixed numbers, and it is crucial that students are comfortable with them for the work they need to do in fifth grade. On to standard four and F4. In this standard, students will utilize their knowledge of unit fractions, improper fractions, and decomposing and composing strategies to develop an understanding of what happens when a fraction is multiplied by a whole number. Let's use two number lines. And we'll start with 4 times 3. Students learn to do this multiplication by jumps on a number line. 4 times 3 means 4 jumps of 3. So let's make those jumps. 1, 2, 3, Four. And then the student goes back and lab labels the jumps. Three, six, nine, twelve, using skip counting. So four times three equals three plus three plus three plus three equals twelve. Three plus three plus three plus three. Now let's look at multiplying a whole number by a fraction. Students can use the same strategy they used just before. So let's try 4 times 1 third. So this means 4 jumps of 1 third. So I'll draw the jumps and then come back and label them. 1, 2, 3, 4 jumps. So let's label them. 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, four-thirds. So now the student can complete the equation. Four times one-third equals one-third plus one-third plus one-third plus one-third equals four-thirds. I know that four times one-third equals four-thirds because I took four jumps of one-third. One, two, three, four jumps of one-third, and that got me to four-thirds. This concept can also be demonstrated using fraction circles or bar models, also known as tape diagrams. On to 4 and F5. Exploring fractions with denominators of 10 and 100 will be the foundation for the decimal number work. Also, even though the work in this standard involves adding fractions with unlike denominators, it is required only in the case of denominators 10 and 100. Show students a hundreds grid and a tens grid. 3 tenths plus 4 tenths equals 7 tenths. 30 hundredths plus 40 hundredths equals 70 hundredths. Have the students compare the two grids and discuss what they notice about the shading. From this discussion, students should see that 3 tenths is equivalent to 30 one hundredths, and 4 tenths is equivalent to 40 one hundredths, and 7 tenths is equivalent to 70 one hundredths. Follow this activity by giving students their own 10 grids and 100 grids, and have them shade in situations like 4 tenths plus 5 one hundredths. Many students, and adults for that matter, struggle to understand the meaning of fraction and operations involving fractions. Using this gradual release from the concrete to the pictorial and finally to the abstract can be the way to help students understand these concepts. Thanks for watching this Math Studio talk. We hope that you enjoyed it, found it meaningful, and learned a thing or two to take back to your classroom.